to sleep, perchance to dream. There's the rub for an estimated 10% of the U.S. population with chronic insomnia. Optogenetics could help them get better rest. Find out how this week on Light Matters. This is Light Matters for January 7th, 2015. I'm James Lowe. And I'm Justine Murphy. On this week's show, we'll discuss how optogenetics is advancing sleep research and how lasers are helping speed up satellite transmissions. But first, we'll learn about a government program fueling development of photonic methane sniffers and take a look at the finalists for the 2015 PRISM Award for Industrial Lasers. Each week until Photonics West, Light Matters will be bringing you short profiles of the finalists for the PRISM Awards, presented every year at the big show by Photonics Media and SPIE. The PRISM Awards recognize innovative light-based technology products that solve problems and improve quality of life. This week, we're highlighting the three finalists in the industrial laser category. The Odin series from Cobalt of Sweden is a compact, tunable, mid-infrared optical parametric oscillator used in gas detection and environmental monitoring. A green single-mode fiber laser from IPG Photonics in Massachusetts offers 500 watts of quasi-continuous wave output for solar cell manufacturing, semiconductor wafer annealing, and copper welding. And JDSU's PicoBlade is a picosecond micro-machining laser that enables non-ablative processing of brittle materials like smartphone and tablet screens. Tune in next week to learn about the finalists in the materials and coatings category. You can also find out more at photonicsprismawards.com. Ten organizations will develop photonic gas monitoring systems under a $30 million program coordinated by the U.S. Department of Energy's Advanced Research Projects Agency. The monitor program focuses on low-cost solutions for detecting methane emissions associated with the production and transportation of oil and natural gas. Companies selected for funding include Aris Technologies of California, Bridger Photonics of Montana, Maxian Technologies of Maryland, Rebellion Photonics of Texas, LICOR of Nebraska, Physical Sciences of Massachusetts, the Palo Alto Research Center, GE, and IBM, as well as the University of Colorado Boulder. Projects include shortwave, midwave, and longwave infrared laser spectrometers, a spectroscopic comb, and carbon nanotube sensors. Individual grants range from $1.4 to $4.5 million. New laser data links could help satellites overcome line of sight difficulties to communicate with the ground more rapidly. The European Space Agency recently achieved a data transfer rate of 0.6 gigabits per second between two satellites in different orbits separated by about 45,000 kilometers. The system could eventually reach a data transmission capacity of 7.2 gigabits per second, according to the ESA. Earth-observing satellites in low Earth orbit, about 700 kilometers above the ground, can only transmit data when they pass over designated ground stations. But these ground stations are permanently visible to geostationary satellites orbiting much higher at about 36,000 kilometers. This allows images transmitted by laser from low Earth to geostationary orbit to be relayed to the ground nearly in real time. The Laser Communication Terminal, or LCT technology, was developed by Airbus Defense and Space subsidiary TSAT Spacecom and the German Aerospace Center. The solid-state laser system is pumped by laser diode benches developed at the Ferdinand Braun Institute. Switching on a specific group of brain cells with optogenetics techniques could help insomniacs get the type of dream-filled sleep they desperately need. MIT researchers successfully triggered dream states in mice by targeting cholinergic neurons in two parts of the brain stem. Control of the cells was achieved by genetically modifying them to express light-sensitive proteins, then selectively activating those cells via head-mounted fiber optic devices. Rapid eye movement, or REM sleep, is crucial to feeling rested. Natural sleep cycles usually are made up of alternating 90-minute periods of REM and non-REM sleep. Existing drugs for insomniacs sedate users, but interfere with both REM and the deeper stages of non-REM sleep. The MIT researchers found that they could trigger REM in mice during periods of non-REM sleep, but that they could not affect REM sleep duration. The study, which was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, helps to clarify the mechanism by which REM sleep is controlled and may be a step toward regulating sleep cycles in humans. That's it for this week's show. We love to read your feedback. Please comment below this video or get in touch with us at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.